Hello everyone, I hope you are enjoying your privacy slash security journey as I am. Um, today I wanted to show you a way for you to finally be able to back up your iOS device easily with one command in Linux. Okay, the issue with iOS devices right now is that of course, it's all proprietary stuff, and they have their own iTunes client, and of course, it's only available on Windows and Mac. So, for Linux users, you're basically left out, you know. And Ubuntu, for example, compared to some other distributions, has done more uh, than their fair share to try to get iOS devices to show up as regular. Uh, discs when you connect them to your computer, but that still doesn't solve the issue of being able to back up your stuff locally if you don't want to use iCloud. So the reason why you don't want to use iCloud, if you're not aware, but which you probably are if you are watching this video since you know what you're looking for, is because iCloud backups are not end-to-end -end encrypted, meaning Apple can easily unlock your backups on their servers and hand it over to anyone who has a uh, legal request for it, or uh, hackers additionally can get your um, backups and unencrypt theoretically all of the stuff that you're backing up, which can include your messages, and that defeats the purpose of and to unencrypted things like iMessage. So today I'll be showing you how to, now that you're using Linux, or perhaps you have been for a while, how to back up your iOS device to Linux. And to be fair, it's really straightforward, and I don't know why I um, kept using iTunes and dual booting into Windows all the time when this is such a simple solution. So this is the main website of the library of uh, iOS connectivity uh, written in C, which doesn't really matter. Um, the point is it's a free and open source library, which is what FOSS stands for. So it has a bunch of command line utilities, as it says here. And I know if you are new to Linux, command line sounds scary, but really uh, you could think of it like talking to Siri uh, over text, let's say that. So, if I have a terminal window open, I can pretty much tell my computer to do whatever I want uh, as long as I know how to communicate with it. But anyway, I won't um, babysit you with this stuff, so I'll just tell you uh, what commands you need to execute. So, you need to install this uh, lib iMobile device, so library iMobile device. Uh, on whatever Linux distribution you're using. Of course, I'm using Ubuntu, so that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do this on. So, easiest way is to look up Levi Mobile Device, install Ubuntu, let's say, for example. So, this is a very old post, but um, I guess you can get it in snap form, but. Um, I believe it is in the uh, official uh, repositories that are already included on your uh, Ubuntu distribution. So here is the package in Ubuntu that you need to install. So to do that, you go sudo apt install and lib iMobile device. Uh, there's the original one, uh, but the latest one right now is lib iMobile device 6. So we're just going to type in lib iMobile device 6. Type in your administrator password and you'll see I already have it installed but it, you know it'll ask you for confirmation and so on and you know you just press enter by default and it installs everything for you. And then you need to connect your iOS device. So I have a device here it's an iPhone XR so you take a um, USB to lightning cable like this, or in some cases, I guess now they have USB-C ports on some things. 
So you take one end, plug it into your computer, take the other end, plug it into your uh, iOS device. So I will do that right now. And it is uh, connected. So you'll see it popped up this folder here. Um, yeah, and from there on, realistically, you need to type in one command. But, of course, if you want your backup to be encrypted, which if you are security minded and you're doing local backups already, uh, or have decided to do them, you will uh, generate a random password and store it in your password manager. That will be your encryption key, basically. Just the password, that password protects your backup. So, what you would do, stuff keeps uh, popping up here as it's all being mounted through various utilities, but that doesn't matter. So, um, we will do sudo, actually, sudo is not necessary in this case. So, uh, this whole library comes with a ton of tools, but I don't know any of them yet, and I figured out a few hours ago how to use uh, the iDevice Backup 2. So, uh, one thing they don't mention is that iDevice Backup is a really old version of iDevice Backup. That's like the original archaic version, I think, for like iOS 3 or earlier. So it'll have this uh, help thing that tells you like, okay, if you want to backup, you type iDevice Backup Backup, and then type in the directory you want it in, or if you want to restore, you restore it from the same directory, like a folder that you have your backups in. So um, it took me a little bit to realize that what people are supposed to be using for newer devices is iDevice Backup 2. And as you can see, there's a lot more options, and it's way more um, uh, concrete. Like, you can, uh, when you're restoring it, you can tell it not to trigger installing the apps that you had backed up, or you can change the password on your encryption, and stuff like that, change your encryption key. So uh, from there, you will type in iDevice Backup 2. Keep that in mind, iDevice Backup 2. Um, I think it goes i for interactive, as you can see here. This option, you can type in either dash i or dash dash interactive to have you request the passwords for the encryption as it's uh, being backed up. So it's like um, a dialogue option to be like, Type in your password, please, and then you type in whatever password you want to encrypt it with. So, um, as you can see by default, I believe encryption is off. So what you will have to do is type in, if you want an encrypted backup, which you do, um, is type in iDevice Backup 2, space, dash i, space, encryption on. And as you can see, you have encryption on and off choices, so you type in either encryption on or encryption off if it's already on. Uh, and then this PWD in brackets stands for password. So this is the password that you will want. You can either type it in right here in the command line, like let's say this is going to be my encryption password. Obviously I wouldn't show my real one on camera here, but uh, uh, you go into your password manager, uh, won't demonstrate that either because it's pretty revealing, you know, there's a lot of info on there and I just don't want to take the, the time to blur everything. So you would go into your uh, password manager, uh, press the random option, like let's say Bitwarden has something like that where you randomize the password and it gives you a big uh, thing to copy that you're able to save in the browser and copy over here. So you take it, control C, control V, and you copy this password here, which is this string of letters here and numbers and special characters. So uh, from there, you will specify a directory to which you want the device backed up to. A directory meaning a folder, as I said. So you can make any directory you want anywhere on the computer. Maybe you have one already. Uh, that you'd like to store, like certain a certain backup folder that you'd like your iPhone stuff to go to as well. So for me personally, I have a folder named iPhone Backups on my home, in my home folder. So I will use the tilde, or whatever it's called, um, to signify that it's a root uh, home, so home folder. From there it's uh, iPhone Backups. 
And so that um, backward slash here is just a space. That's how you signify a space in the name of a folder or file on, uh, uh, in the command line. So this is my home slash iPhone backups folder. And I will press enter and it will go through the whole process. So I already have a password set. And since I've already done the backup before, you don't need to type in your password every time after that. So in this first time that you run it, you just say encryption on and your password. And you'll be able to set your encryption password for the first time. And then it remembers how to encrypt it, basically. One main thing I forgot. You have to type in backup and then the directory. So uh, I device backup to specify backup specify interactive to set whatever passwords it may need. Um, then you have your encryption on, and then your alphanumeric um, encryption key, iPhone backups, and let me move myself real quick just so uh, let's say up here so I won't cover up the important stuff so your directory password everything is here you will press enter it'll run and generate your backup so now that I've done that or once you do that and you want to back up again another time which you do so you want to have regular backups you have iDevice Backup 2, then uh, Backup. Now you don't need the interactive option because you already set the passwords. Um, and you've set the encryption option, so you don't need to specify that either. Backup and your directory, and that's it. So this will work for me because I've already set everything. So I will let it run to show you what it's doing. So you can see it specifies backup directory is home Igor iPhone backups, which is my directory. Backup will be encrypted. Requesting backup from device. Pull backup mode. It's going to have a bunch of these scary, um, what's it called, progress bars, and then tell you backup is completed. So we'll just wait on that. And uh, I'm not sure if this is specifically required. It usually does. It's good about telling you. Uh, when you need to do this, but typing in your passcode and having your phone unlocked before you do this uh, will potentially have less uh, issues if anything is not right, basically. So this uh, library uh, for iOS devices, I'm sure it you know understands that people just plug in their phone and not think about like typing in a passcode on the phone itself. They just think like, oh, it's connected, so I'll just. Uh, do a backup. So it may ask you to enter the passcode or it might act wrong in some way. Try to run it again after you um, type in the passcode on your phone. Because the first time you connect it also I believe uh, iOS has this dialog box on the device saying uh, do you trust this computer so it remembers the um, uh, Mac address if I'm correct basically the hardware address of the computer so you know that it's trustworthy and you don't need to type in your passcode to be able to uh, connect to the phone via a cable. So as you can see it's doing its thing right now, receiving some files. So one problem you may encounter, I'll talk about this while this is uh, going on, is if you've done an iTunes offline backup, if you have the iTunes software on your Windows and that's what you've been using to locally back up uh, your device, uh, you will have this option to back up to this computer, aka your local Windows machine, and encrypt the iPhone backup. And the first time you do this, just like the first time we type in the password here, but don't have to later on for, you know, uh, subsequent backups, uh, this password is stored on your iOS device. So if you've been doing this backup and then you try to back it up in Linux, it will use automatically the encryption option and also use the password that you used on this iTunes uh, local backup. 
So you will have to use that same password and that is the default password that's already set. So if that's the case, then you would simply type in iDevice Backup 2, Backup, and then your uh, preferred backup folder. So if you want to change your password that you already set up in iTunes to do uh, your backups on Linux with a new password, you will have to type in, I'll just pull up the help option again so you can see, and also here is what it looks like when the backup is done. So here's the help. Once again, we can use the help to reference what commands we need to type in. So help uh, change password old new. So what you will do is go iDevice backup to change pw. Uh, your old password, you will take that, copy it, paste it here. Let's say this is our old password, one, two, three, and our new password, which is Preferably alphanumeric, um, very long, auto-generated, like boom boom. Okay, let's take this parenthesis out, and yeah, it'll, if the first password is correct, it will change our encryption password to that. And once that's done, you can once again run the iDevice Backup 2 Backup Directory option. And that's it. So this will let you have encrypted local backups on Linux uh, in your iOS device without using iTunes uh, through Windows or through Wine or any kind of unnecessary crap like that. So that's it. Thanks for watching.